Malignant otitis externa or skull based osteomyelitis has been all time favorite question for university examination or PG entrance examination. The term malignant is not just used because of its histologic sense but because of its propensity to cause complication. Hence it is a misnomer. Now since its effective treatment is available the term should be discontinued. It is most commonly seen in elderly diabetics okay in patients with uncontrolled diabetes mellitus this is a prerequisite for malignant otitis externa in diabetics due to their immunocompromised state it can be also seen in patients with leukemia or patient on anti cancer drug or patients with hiv infection it is rare in children but more common in males as compared to females the most common agent is pseudomonas aeruginosa okay let's look at its pathophysiology it will always start with the history of trauma history of trivial trauma or minor injury or minor lacerations we call that q tip injury and since the diabetic patient are poor in healing it will take a little longer in healing and by that time it can get infected and it will start as cellulitis it can spread to the perichondrium and result in perichondritis from perichondrium to chondrium right it will result in chondritis and osteitis and it will go to skull base and from skull base it will spread medially into the middle ear cavity and the petrous bone it can result in petrositis it can go posteriorly to mastoid result in mastoiditis anteriorly to temporal mandibular joint and inferiorly to jugular foramen if it involves jugular foramen we call it jugular foramen syndrome and it can paralyze 9th 10th and 11th nerve and it also cause jugular venous thrombosis now once 10th nerve is paralyzed there will be no gag reflex patient may aspirate and die of pneumonia and because of all this dreaded complication this is the reason why people call this as malignant so it is a misnomer now how will the patient present to you if the patient comes to your opd he is elder and presents to you with severe otalgia and facial nerve paralysis you should always start thinking of malignant otitis externa okay so patient will come with severe otalgia facial nerve paralysis and since 10th nerve is also gone there will be troubled swallowing ear discharge would be scanty foul smelling and yellowish green in color due to pseudomonas infection if you look with otoscope there will be reddish granulation tissue between the cartilaginous and the bony junction with white dead necrotic bone in the external auditory canal we call it sequestrum now if you see reddish granulation tissue you should think of malignant otitis externa but if you see pale granulation tissue you should think of three things the most common thing in india is tuberculosis second is allergy and third is the autoimmune diseases so reddish and pale granulation tissue what are the investigation which you should order first is pus culture and sensitivity pus culture will reveal pseudomonas biopsy from the granulation tissue will reveal necrotizing vasculitis because it is diabetes technetium 99 scan which is important for diagnosis of disease right for diagnosis because it cannot be used for monitoring of the disease because it is present for whole life so for monitoring of disease we'll use gallium 67 scan okay for monitoring of the disease because it is taken up by leukocyte so technetium 99 gallium 67 scan very important for malignant otitis externa and of course you will order hrct temporal bone to know the extent of the disease these are the investigation which you will order now this whole thing has been summarized by levinson's criteria for diagnosis for malignant otitis externa okay there will be refractory otitis externa which is refractory from the conservative treatment there will be severe nocturnal otalgia purulent otorrhea granulation tissue in the external auditory canal if you do a pus culture there will be growth of pseudomonas okay and there will be presence of diabetes and other immunocompromised state these are the levinson's criteria for diagnosis of malignant otitis externa how will you stage and classify the disease if the gallium 67 scan turns out positive but technetium 99 is negative and if there is soft tissue involvement we call it stage 1 or necrotizing otitis externa if both are positive but there is involvement of ear and mastoid we call it skull base osteomyelitis or stage 2 of the disease if both are positive but there is extensive involvement of skull 
we call it skull based osteomyelitis but extensive skull based osteomyelitis that is the stage 3 of the disease now how will you treat first of all control the diabetes okay we do oral toilet we have to give anti pseudomonal antibiotics like ciprofloxacin or ceftazidime or piperacillin piperacillin is a little bit costlier so we always start with ciprofloxacin and if there is no response we give ceftazidime and then piperacillin generally we have to work with the um, antibiotic sensitivity report and if there is no response we can do mastoid exploration for the development of the disease